So now coming to the important part of the hypertension, that is the management. Let's go ahead with the previous case. So you must be remembering the previous case. We have a 62 year old lady, African black lady, and she was having a stage one hypertension. She was having pre-diabetes. She was obese and dyslipidemia. So always, whenever we are treating a patient with hypertension, we have to see the patient specific factors. So what do you mean by patient specific factor? We have to see the age. The patient has a 62 year old age. Comorbidity was obesity. She had a dyslipidemia and pre-diabetes. Concurrent medications. You are not on any medications. Drug adherence. That we have to check after she started taking the drugs. And you have to see the pocket of the patient. Cost. And said decision making should drive the ultimate choice of anti-hypertensive medications. We have to make a decision and said decision with the patient also. So how to go ahead with the initial initiation of blood pressure lowering treatment? If there is high blood pressure, high normal blood pressure, that is BP is 130 to 139 systolic and diastolic 85 89, always always start with lifestyle modification. What is lifestyle modification or advice? We will be discussing in the next slides. And you have to consider treatment in very high risk patients with cardiovascular disease and especially coronary artery disease. If the patient is grade 1 hypertension, lifestyle and you have to start with the treatment. Grade 2 definitely lifestyle and treatment. There is no choice. And you have to aim for BP control within 3 months in grade 2. Grade 3 is a in the emergency condition, you have to send the patient to ER, in my rule out hypertension, urgency or emergency, and start the treatment and admit the patient or if not control in the emergency. So in this case, in our case, the patient is having pre-diabetes and hypertension. So we can start with the lifestyle modification in this patient. So what is lifestyle modification? Diet. So what is the diet for hypertension? This is known as DASH diet, D-A-S-S diet. That is dietary approach to stop hypertension physical activity what do you mean physical activity it means we have discussed in diabetes also we have to tell the patient to walk for 30 to 45 minutes per day in five five days a week and weight loss you should target at least five to seven percent or ten percent of weight loss from your previous weight if you are obese okay so if clinically appropriate this patient should have avoid agents like which can increase the blood pressure like NSAID, steroid, stimulant and decongestion. So with the lifestyle modification, what are the expected systolic blood pressure reduction and recommendation? So these are the recommendations. So weight should be in our ACL it should be less than BMI should be less than 25, 23 kg per meter square and is expected to reduce 5 to 20 millimeter of mercury of systolic blood pressure if you lose 10 kg okay a dash diet means patient should take increased amount of fruits vegetables low fat dietary products and decrease amount of saturated fat content it will decrease 2 to 8 millimeter mercury so it is very important this slide so dietary reduction can stop you from taking the medication Salt restriction should be 1.5 gram per day. Alcohol, better to tell patient not to take alcohol. If you tell the patient to take alcohol, they will start taking more. So better tell, tell them not to take alcohol. And physical activity I have already told. So there are various food items to be avoided. But nowadays we are lazy guys watching TV. See, uh, in, while watching the TV we are carrying our chips and all these products are there. So we have to avoid this. So pickles, uh, chips ready to eat foods because they contain all the high salt and monosodium glutamate ajinomoto like our female are more fond of uh, yy chowmin so we have to stop taking that and our children or young children so we have to stop taking that fried foods alcohol so this is easy to say but difficult to avoid what we have to avoid if you want to be healthy so you all are aware of drugs used in treatment of hypertension. I won't be going in details, but if we see or classify, these are the common drugs which are using for the hypertension OPD, like angiotensin receptor blocker. We can start from telemetron, losartan, telmisartan, ibisartan, AC inhibitor, caprolyn, anaphril, beta blockers, can be metoprolol, propanolol, calcium channel blockers, amlodipine, diuretics, like thiazide diuretics, and all. 
so in this case the our previous case the recommended bp goal is 130 by 80 mm of mercury so with the lifestyle modification if she does not improve within one month or three months then you can start the patient with the antihypertensive drugs so which antihypertensive drug you want to start in this patient this is very important since the patient is african black she is obese and she is having stage one hypertension the drug of choice in this african black is thiazide diuretics because they are it has study have shown african black thiazide diuretics and calcium channel blockers are more effective for lowering blood pressure and preventing cardiovascular event compared to ac inhibitor and art but if this was a patient in our society or in our part of the world and stage one hypertension we will start with the along with one thiazide diuretics we can start with the arb or ac inhibitors they should be dual therapy in this patient so how to decide whether the patient require dual therapy or a monotherapy if the blood pressure monotherapy is considered in the low risk grade hypertension one grade one hypertension like if systolic blood pressure is less than 150 mm per mercury on a very old patient more than 80 years or failure patient then we are start with the monotherapy or else if the patient is having stage one hypertension always start with the dual therapy ac inhibitor arp or calcium channel blocker or diuretics diuretics should be there always step two you can use triple therapy if the pressure blood pressure not control the dual therapy you can start with triple therapy and if the, with the triple therapy the blood pressure is in level as resistant hypertension so whenever there is a resistant hypertension you have to rule out the secondary causes if that is ruled out still the patient is having hypertension then we have can add spinal lactone 25 to 50 mg od or other diuretics alpha blocker or beta blocker this table is showing whenever there are some other comorbidities which are the best drug hypertensive drug to start so you people must be confused so whenever the patient or diabetes present heart failure with an hypertension the best drug of choice is diuretics but you can also start all other drug like beta blocker ac inhibitor arb but not the calcium channel blocker because calcium channel blocker itself can cause pedal edema and an excess of the heart failure so likewise in atrial fibrillation with the hypertension drug of choice is beta blocker ac inhibitor arb so you can see this chart in diabetes we are usually starting with the ac inhibitor and arb most important is you should know the dose and you should know the maximum dose to provide to why to avoid the side effects of the anti hypertensive drugs any drug have a side effects so diuretics the common side effects is they can have hypokalemia or hyperkalemia or they can have gout so you have to avoid this diuretics in renal failure patients beta blockers can have what they can cause they can cause bradycardia and it can exacerbate a heart block so you have to stop the drug in and you cannot give this drug in asthma COPD patient because it exacerbate so this thing you should know okay a similar should not be given in a pregnancy when the patient is having bilateral renal artery stenosis hyperkalemia these are the contraindications for a similar so which are the commonly used drugs so with i am telling the content so you should be knowing contraindication and side effects so after the non pharmacological -pharm -pharm diet treatment and the pharmacological treatment the patient is not blood pressure is not improving then you can go with the non pharmacological treatment like carotid balance strip stimulation you can keep pacemaker and stent in the carotid balance strip and stimulate the, the carotid balance strip device based therapy for hypertension is recommended by ecs also they have told you can see in the that table use of device based therapy is not recommended for routine uh, of hypertension unless in context of clinical studies and rct until further evidence regarding their safety and efficacy becomes available but it is been going on so we can one of the leading therapy in hypertension nowadays is renal denervation therapy and you can also create a ev fistula this thing i have already told contraindication to the use of special anti hypertensive therapy for the common drugs for example diuretics if there is a gout you do not give that diuretics beta blocker for asthma and bradycardia patient you should not give if the patient is having already the pedal edema you should not give calcium channel act blockers likewise 
how to treat and or approach a patient with max uncontrolled hypertension so max uncontrolled hypertension means the blood pressure in the home is very high but in the opd is normal so office bp at goal is not high then office bp is more than a 510 mm of mercury have a goal of more than three agents then we have to start with the and the high home blood pressure bp measurement at a goal it present then is a white coat hypertension effect and confirm with the ambulatory blood pressure measuring and you have if this is not present then we have to continue treating therapy so basically this chart is showing how to differentiate between the white coat hypertension and a max hypertension okay so it is done with the help of the home blood pressure measuring and ambulatory blood pressure measuring so we have already discussed what is resistant hypertension resistant hypertension was with the failure of lower to lower systolic blood pressure or less than 140 mm mercury and diastolic blood pressure less than 90 even after appropriate lifestyle measures and treatment with optimal dose of three or more drugs including diuretics there are condition called pseudo resistant hypertension don't label as someone directly with the resistant hypertension because patient might have poor adherence to prescribing they might be not taking medication they might be bringing empty tablets uh, cover to you patient might be having white coat phenomenon only the patient have high blood pressure has opd but home it is normal the technique of measurement of blood pressure may be incorrect they may be calcificus in the brachial artery mostly in the elderly patient okay so you have to rule out this before labeling any other resistant hypertension so what is the treatment of resistant hypertension is a lifestyle modification sodium restriction and as you already told we can start with spinal lactone if you patient not tolerant to spinal lactone what what is the side effect of spinal lactone the more main most common side effect of spinal lactone is the gynecomastia painful kind of gynecomastia so you can start with epinephrine amiloride or higher dose thyroid diuretics or loop diuretics and you can also start with the bisoprolol or, or alpha blocker like doxazosin a dose is given here so for white coat hypertension lifestyle medic changes regular out of office bp monitoring you have to do and drug treatment consider in those with high cbd factor and routine drug treatment is not indicated in white coat hypertension we have to consider the patient basically max hypertension also lifestyle changes regular follow up anti hypertension drug treatment is considered to normalize the out of office bp measurement only or else we have to go with the lifestyle changes or regular follow up now coming to another important comorbidity is issue hypertension and pregnancy if office blood pressure systolic blood pressure more than in 140 mg of mercury and diastole is more than 90 mg of mercury we can classify the pregnancy and hypertension as mild moderate and severe as per this blood pressure if blood pressure systolic blood pressure 140 mg of mercury and diastole 90 to 99 is mild if moderate It defined as 150 159 mm of mercury and diastole is 100 to 109 mm of mercury. The severe hypertension pregnancy defined as systole is more than or equal to 160 mm of mercury and diastole is 110 mm of mercury. So, the main aim of management of gestational hypertension is we will admit the patient of gestational hypertension in the case of severe hypertension only when the blood pressure more than or equal to 160 by 110 mm of mercury. but before that you should be able to rule out the target organ damage associated with the hypertension whether the patient is more prone for eclampsia pre eclampsia and we should be aware which are the drug you should avoid in hypertension so in previous slide i have told a c inhibitor and arv should not be given in such patient so we have to stop that drugs what we do here is usually start with here in the opd is methaldopa if the patient is mild hypertension If the patient has a moderate hypertension to severe hypertension, you can start with oral labetrol as a first line of treatment. And we have to measure the BP four times a day when the patient is having severe hypertension, at least twice a week, moderate hypertension, and once a week with the mild hypertension in the gestational hypertension. And we have to see for the proteinuria also. And as I already told, we have to see for kidney function, LFT, transaminase level, electrolytes. to see whether the patient is prone for health syndrome no like a pre eclampsia and eclampsia so after the management of patient in pregnancy with hypertension for hypertension another important issue is what to do 
after postpartum. So following antihypertensive drugs have to no no known side effect on the baby's receiving breast milk. So these drugs can be given with 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 the close eyes when the patient is postpartum hypertension, like levetiracetam, nifedipin, enalapril, capropril, adrenal metoprolol. After the patient give birth to baby, okay. Now another important issue if people are confused or maybe having doubt. Preoperative management of hypertension. So whenever there is a newly diagnosed hypertensive patient scheduled for elective surgery, there should be preoperative screen for CVRX. What we do for CVRX screening? We send for ECG, creatinine, fasting, and echo in selected patient chest X-ray. We have to avoid large perioperative BP fluctuation during perioperative period. If there is a non-cardiac surgery, we may not defer in patient with grade one to grade one to hypertension. We have to give drugs. Perioperative continuation of beta blockers is recommended in hypertension patient on chronic treatment with these drugs. We are usually starting with the beta blockers. Transient perioperative discontinuation of RAS blockers should be considered in patient with hypertension undergoing non non cardiac surgery. So at the last, so what are the clinical sequence of flowchart for management of hypertension? This is very important slide. First, measure of his BP accurately. Correct measurement of blood pressure measurement and we have to measure blood pressure in the another room with the sister or helping not in the ross open. Detect white coat hypertension max hypertension using ambulatory blood pressure measuring or home blood pressure measuring. So if the patient is having high blood pressure during OPD visit, tell the patient to measure the blood pressure at the home for one week and come. See if the home blood pressure measurement is normal and BP office measurement, BP measurement is not raised, that is white coat hypertension. But if the home blood pressure means high office is normal, that is max hypertension. Then evaluate for the secondary hypertension. Whenever the patient is having palpitations, sweatings, fluctuating BP, we have to suspect fewer chromocytes. When the patient is having fetal pushing syndrome and BP is not controlled, then we have to rule out pushing syndrome. And identify the target organ time from head to toe. Okay, you can do fundoscopy, ECG, creatinine, and all. Identify and discuss the treatment goals. Use Atherosclerotic cardiovascular risk estimation to guide BP threshold for drug therapy. Align treatment option with comorbidities. For example, if patient is having diabetes, hypertension, ARV, AC inhibitor, drug of choice. If the patient is having post MI and hypertension, beta blocker, AC inhibitor, ARV, drug of choice. And account for age, race, ethnicity, sex, and special circumstances in any hypertension in patient. If patient is very old age, do not be more aggressive in blood pressure measurement because they can have a orthostatic hypertension and they can we have, they can become unconscious with that. Initiate antihypertensive pharmacological therapy. So depending on the grade of hypertension, you have to initiate the anti antihypertensive pharmacological therapy. If you stage 1 hypertension, you still usually start with the dual therapy. Ensure, ensure appropriate follow-up. So if patient is having mild hypertension, you can call the patient after 1 month, 3 months, 6 months. But if the patient has stage 1, stage 2 hypertension, you have to call the patient weekly. Use team based approach. You have to use team based approach means you can you have to take a use of help of nursing staff, your uh, another colleague, clinical department colleague, uh, ophthalmology or uh, your colleague from, from the uh, prenatal department and all. Connect patient to clinician by telehealth. For example, now we are having corona all over the world and there is a lockdown. So if the patient want to discuss a problem with Hypertension, you have can connect with, with this like this YouTube video and all, and you can connect the patient also with the telehealth. Detect and reverse non adherence. So, you should ask the patient whether they are taking drugs properly or not. Detect white coat effect and mask control hypertension, and use health information technology for remote monitoring and self monitoring of BP. So, with this, I would like to end my talk here only. Thank you very much for patient listening.